Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's talk about what we call the logistic growth function. What is a logistic growth function? Well, it bears out from a situation where we know that in real life things cannot keep growing exponentially forever because the end result would be that you have an infinite quantity of something which is not humanly possible or not physically possible in any situation. So let's say that here we have a representation of an exponential growth function. So this would be n of t is equal to n to the, uh, the well, let me say it again. So the amount that you have at any point in time as a function of time is equal to the initial amount times e to the r, t, r being the growth rate and t being the time. You can see that it would just continue growing and growing and growing. But in real situations, for example, population growth, at some point, the things that feed into allowing the population to grow will run out or the supply will be limited so that only a certain population can be maintained. And so what happens is that the growth then levels off and then eventually asymptotically reaches a maximum level that the existing resources can then su sustain the amount of the population that's then present. And so we call that the logistic growth function. There's a lot of situations that use this kind of example. The general equation of the logistic growth function is that the amount at any point in time is equal to some constant divided by another constant plus c times e to the minus rt. Notice there's a minus there. And then if you want to evaluate the function, notice that when t is equal to 0, when time starts out, e to the 0 power is equal to 1. That means this whole function becomes a divided by b plus c. And when time goes to infinity, e to the minus infinity is 1 over infinity, which is 0. That means the whole function goes to, to a over b. Now, here's an example so you can look at some numbers and see what you would get. So here we have n as a function of time. The amount in the population as a function of time is equal to 1,000 divided by the quantity 20 plus 480 times e to the minus 0 0.8 times t. Well, notice what happens when t is equal to 0. So when t is equal to 0, e to the 0 power is equal to 1, 1,000 divided by 20 plus 480, which means 1,000 divided by 500, that means the function becomes equal to 2. Then when t is equal to infinity, we can say that 1 over infinity is 0, this goes away, 1,000 divided by 20 is equal to 50, which means that when time is equal to 0, the population is equal to 2, and after a large amount of time has elapsed, the population reaches 50 and doesn't grow beyond that. Now, of course, it doesn't take an infinite amount of time to reach 50. That depends, of course, on this constant r. So let's use that example to see, for example, what the population would be when t is equal to 1 and what the population would be when t is equal to 5 to get kind of a feel for that. So let's do the example. So the population n when t is equal to 1 would be equal to 1,000 divided by 20 plus 480 times e to the minus 0 0.8 times 1. And of course, for this, you would want to use a calculator. So 1 times negative 0.8 is negative 0.8, so 0.8, put a minus sign there. Take e to the x of that, times 480 plus 20. Use that as a denominator. That would be 1 over x, and that would be right there. And then multiply that times 1,000. And we get, hmm, we get 4.24. My eyesight isn't that good anymore to see these numbers. So this is equal to 4.24. All right, which basically means when time is equal to 1, the population has doubled from 2 to 4. So is t years, is t days, it doesn't really matter uh, if this is a natural population in the wild, when maybe a population moves in onto an island or, or a place where the resources are limited, and so let's say two animals get into that population. After one year, the group may have grown to four individuals. So what would be the population growth when t is equal to five? So after five years, how many individuals would be on the island now? So we take 1,000 divided by 20 plus 480 times e to the minus 0 0.8 times five. And let's see what we get after five years. All right, so we get four. That's negative. Take e to the x, multiply that times 480. Then we add 20 to that, plus 20, and use that as the 1 over x, and then times 1,000, much better, equals. So now we get 34.7. So 34.7. So here we have the growth where 
two individuals show up at the beginning, time equals zero, after one year, they've grown to four, after five years, they've grown to 34, almost 35, and you can see that when time becomes infinite, you grow to 50. Well, probably you get close to 50 when t is equal to 10, so it's not going to take an infinite amount of time, but it looks like maybe after about 10 years or so, the population has grown to about 50, and then since the resources are limited, the population will not grow beyond that number because there's only so much to go around. And that's what we call the logistic growth function or the log logistic growth rate. And that's how it's done.